Welcome to another edition of the Dental Today podcast. Thank you for stopping by. This is brought to you by Lab Media TV. My name is Hezekiah Morales, and here we go. Remember to follow us on social media at Lab Media TV. Our next guest is an assistant manager at Dentcraft Dental Laboratory that specializes in implant work and lifelike removable prosthesis. She started dental school at 14 years old, completing a full-time course over four years. She started working in Croatia and Slovenia before moving to England 10 years ago, where she began to discover her passion for composites. Her passion drives her to seek new techniques and approaches to improve her work. She takes a lot of pride in being able to help put a smile back on her patients' faces, and her passions also include dental photography, painting, reading, traveling, and writing. Please help me welcome Nina Furkatin. Nina, how are you doing today? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic, and I'm so excited that we were finally able to schedule and actually make it happen. It's been uh, we had to reschedule once uh, before, and uh, thankfully you're here now. What time is it uh, up there uh, on the other side of the pond? On the other side of the pond, it's around 1 p.m. It's so, around 1 p.m. Yeah. And he and here it's it's uh, we're on Eastern Standard Time, and it's about seven seven uh, seven thirty here actually. So so we're we're quite uh, quite a, a distance, but I'm glad we're able to connect through technology and all this. So, uh, Nina, it's it's um, this is your first podcast, correct? Correct. My first podcast, not my last one, hopefully. <laughs> Definitely not. I'm sure there are so many people that want to hear your story. And uh, you're, you're, um, you're not native to where you are now. Is that correct? That's correct. I am uh, a Croatian, half Croatian, half Italian. My mom uh, is Italian. And uh, yeah, life just brought me to England. So I'm here now for the... I always say it's just been five years, but it's been actually 10 years that I'm here now. So, yeah, it's a big part of my life. And, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying my life here now. For now, you never know where life can bring you. You never know what the opportunity can bring you. You never know what will happen in the future. But for now, I'm here. And how's the, how are you adjusting to the cold? It's not that big of a difference from Croatia to London. Oh. It's a it's a huge difference, like oh, really, okay. really, yeah, big. Where I'm from, I'm actually from the smallest village ever in Croatia. It's oh, like wow. really, really small, like around 20 houses. We don't have shops, we don't have bars, we don't have nothing like that. So oh, wow. we are properly in the nature, old school. <laughs> so uh, coming to England, what's such a cultural shock for me and uh, I'm still surprised I'm still adapting I'll, even after 10 years it's just like wow. so many different people so many different cultures but it's I love it I love it it's just uh, I think it uh, really enriched my life you know truly London has uh, definitely become a melting pot at this point uh, like you said many many cultures many uh, different uh, ideologies, philosophies, ways of life uh, coming into one place. So you, you said it was a, a cultural shock, uh, but uh, let, let's get into the dental. When you are uh, coming from Croatia or uh, going from Croatia to London, uh, how was that uh, in terms of your work? How, how did that affect you? Uh, well, uh, I was lucky enough that uh, when I was... Uh, uh, when I started working, of course, I worked in Croatia, but I also worked in Slovenia, that it's a country next to Croatia. When I was working in Slovenia, I was actually um, working in this lab that was uh, part of uh, an Ivoclar training center. Mm. So I was quite lucky uh, to learn, um, to be on lots of courses, to learn lots of techniques and stuff. So when I actually came here in England, I was... Um, Pretty okay with my knowledge. <laughs> uh, of course, it was um, a bit of a shock because England being a, a richer country, of course, they have uh, uh, much advanced technologies than what we use back home. So 
it was a bit, uh, uh, it took me a bit of an adjustment period. Uh, lots of crying in the bathroom. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just love it. I just love it because the possibilities here are absolutely endless. If you have the will to learn, if you have the motivation and people recognize that and they will just push you, push you, push you. And for now, I love it. So the the atmosphere going into an uh, uh, let's call it an uh, atmosphere conducive to enrichment was key in your growth as well, correct? Yes. So I get bored quite easily. That's mm. part of my personality, unfortunately. So I always need something more. Something Absolutely. more to push me forward. Um, back in Croatia, I worked in a couple of uh, labs and. Uh, let's say around two, three years would be the maximum that I could stay in a lab because I felt I learned what I had to learn and there was no nothing that would, uh, I don't know, entice me, you know. Mm. <laughs> Here in England, um, it's much more different. Like my boss is quite good. So when I come to him and I said, oh, I want to learn this or let's do this, let's do this, he, is, he actually listened to me. <laughs> So, and he allows me to do it. He's a good boss. He employed me as a good employee and just uh, leave me do my thing. <laughs> He's happy, obviously, because I work still there. So, <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So you're, 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 um, you're looking at that, uh, at that opportunity. You take this opportunity and this opportunity is conducive to growth. You're in, again, still in an atmosphere of growth with a boss that's, um, that's allowing you to grow and, and you feel your freedom. Uh, do you believe he was he was able to uh, to identify that you had that, let's call it that virtue of not being complacent? Is uh, Do you think that's why he gave you that lead way? Um. I'm a quite a pushy person, so if mm. I want something, um, if I want something, I just come out and say it. And uh, I, I did. Um, I'm. I was quite clear with him from the beginning that uh, I want to grow and I, I want to uh, get the maximum out of myself that I can get. And um, well, it's not just my boss, also my manager. They both. Uh, support me quite a lot in uh, my uh, in whatever I want to do in whatever ad adventure I want to take so yeah I'm, I'm quite lucky in that kind of way that I'm working in a lab that uh, really have my back so that's like that's, for me that's important yeah absolutely important the the, the atmosphere for growth uh, conducive to growth is definitely important now uh, you you got involved in this whole world of Instagram and Instagram has a way of uh, connecting yeah. a lot of interesting people, especially in this industry. How long have you been on Instagram? Well, I started Instagram quite a few years ago, but I never really took into it. I'm, I'm a little bit of a private person, so social media is not, it's just a way of uh, me connecting to my family back home and my friends back home. So I never really use it for a higher purpose, let's say. But um, this last year, of course, uh, England was in a quite hardcore lockdown. So um, the boredom was pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah. and I uh, start to be on, of course, I start to post a little bit more and connecting uh, on people on social media a bit more. And I'm so glad I did. I met so many amazing people, amazing technicians, also a lot of them from the States. And it just uh, like open another door. You know, we all talk, we all have different techniques. We all share our knowledge and I absolutely love it. I'm so happy that I got uh, into Instagram now a little bit more than from the beginning. And, you know, I don't post a lot. I'm a little bit of a more of a let's talk side. <laughs> I'm a little bit lazy on posting, but no, I absolutely enjoy it. I love it so much. Definitely, like you said, it, it opens a new door, which again, I, I like to call it a new world, really, uh, because it's it's uh, so many different people from different countries, like you mentioned, different techniques, different perspectives. And uh, it, it seems like your Instagram has has gotten quite the following from these past couple of months. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I, I think it's... Uh... People, you know, come to uh, come to me and ask me questions, ask me about my techniques. Uh, it's just like 
I love sharing what I know because uh, growing up uh, in Croatian stuff, there was, um, I mean, working in Croatia in this country, there is still a little bit of a feel of I'm, don't gon- I'm not going to share everything with you because people are still a little bit care that you will be competition and uh, the problem is I will be competition anyway because I will learn what I want to learn if you help me or not it's just like if you don't help me I will be an evil competition (laughs) 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 but instead on Instagram and social media I mean I don't know all the people that I met and um, it allows me to talk to people that I never thought they will even glance in my direction you know uh, all these fantastic texts from, as you said, all around the world and stuff. And uh, it's just, if I had Instagram and social media when I was younger, and I had this pool of knowledge when I was younger, I would have been miles ahead from when I'm now. So uh, one of my advices for all young technicians is just get into it. Don't be scared. Ask people questions. You might not Mm -hmm. always get the answer and stuff, but lots of us will share the knowledge freely because, you know, I remember when I was growing, I wanted somebody to guide me, to give me advices, to help me. And I did not have that so much. So when a young technician come to me and ask me for something now, I share that because I do want people to succeed. It's uh, it's not competition. It, it, there no. is no competition. I'm me, you are you. We, we can exactly. all do good. So that's my thoughts about it. That's a that's a that's a beautiful thing, and the way you you put it, I believe, is is uh, is very well said. Now, uh, when people come to you, what are let's let's just go over three of the most frequently asked questions that you receive on your Instagram. Just three. <laughs> okay, just three. Oh, that's quite hard. I mean, people are very interested. Um, I love doing dentures. It's not my uh, main focus where I specialized. Uh, my uh, speciality are implants and implant beans and hybrids. That's where I feel more comfortable with. But dentures are a little bit of an underdog of the dental world. <laughs> and I love underdogs. That's my passion. <laughs> so dentures are quite close to my heart. So lots of young technicians come to me, ask me about uh, my denture work, let's say my function, how can they improve their function? And of course, the big question is my composite work because that's where I focus um, heavily in the last uh, year. So I have lots of questions about these kind of things, but also uh, let's say about, I have also questions about the implants and how to improve mm-hmm. the aesthetic on the implant work. So all in all, I have lots of questions about lots of things that, uh, okay. But I like to share everything. So whatever question they have, I'll try to help if I don't know the answer because, you know, sometimes I don't. I'm not perfect. I can, there is always room for improvement. I will uh, find out and I will then share with them my answer, my, uh, my, my knowledge. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and if you could think of one question that continues to come up on, in, your, in, your, uh, in your DMs or in your feed, what question would that be? That's also about composite. That's like composite. the bigger, yeah, that's the pink composite that I do on my denture and on my beams. That's been, uh, in the last year, like, um, I've, uh, I tried to really improve on that, on the mm. aesthetics and stuff, because I was pretty happy with my function. I think function, it's the number one. Like that the patient can eat with this denture, that the patient can function. That's like the main part. But um, I wanted to make them look as natural as possible. I want them, I want the patient to feel comfortable. I don't want that they think, oh, it's a piece of plastic and stuff. Because, you know, the older generations, they are not, uh, uh, they have active lives. They want something to make them also feel good about themselves. And... uh, if something looks good, it will make them feel good. So definitely my number one question that I get always in my DM is about my composite, how I do them, how I uh, stack them, what do I polish, uh, uh, my techniques of uh, giving texture to it. So that's always like the biggest question that I get always in my DMs. And, and are you looking to, to uh, 
probably record a course or something like that, where you share a little bit of your information, a little bit of your technique, a little bit of your secret sauce? Yes, that is uh, something in the making. I cannot say too much about it, but it is like, because it's still a little bit like a secret. <laughs> oh, right. Well, ladies but and gentlemen, uh... you heard it here first on the, yeah. on the Dental Today podcast. It's in the works. That, yeah. <laughs> that is something in the making. I mean, there was... Um, there was a webinar planned uh, last year and stuff, but unfortunately, because of COVID and stuff, uh, it was impossible. Because for now, here, you know, we cannot have anybody in the lab. Uh, the rules are quite, um, um, they're a little bit uh, more strict than I think it's in uh, USA. So we are very strict of not having people in the lab uh, and uh, wow. we cannot really meet uh, anybody in the ha in houses or anything. We can only meet outside and that the rule just changed this week. So practically wow. before that, we could not see family, friends and nothing. Wow. Uh, we could not travel outside our uh, city. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it's been a really really hard year for lots of us. It's just homework, homework. In one way, is great because it allowed me to concentrate really uh, on my work and to I would have not have improved so much as I did not have this time. But on the other hand, for uh, our mental health and you know, it's it's been quite hard. And of course, I still. I've been, I've not been home for a year now, and uh, it's it's very heavy for me not to be home for that long. Especially, you know, we, I'm very close to my family, and uh, Skype is just does not cut it anymore. I need to go and I see. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree. Definitely, definitely. So I'm I'm excited that you that you uh, shared that's in the making. The the course is in the making. That's very. Yes exciting and and hopefully we can uh, we can have that information uh, as soon as that uh, as soon as that course is available we're very excited about that now also did did the questions for your composite work and everything begin uh, when you started posting more pictures did, did that uh, did that influence uh, the the um, the level of questions that were thrown your way absolutely Absolutely. Like uh, uh, social media is such a great platform to not only to connect with people, but also to show your work and, uh, you know, share your knowledge, as we said. Uh, and absolutely, I started to post a little bit more while I was in lockdown, so I was quite bored, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, uh, so I started to post a bit more and the avalanche of questions that I got from the pictures and stuff was quite overwhelming, actually. I, I, didn't, <laughs> realize, I didn't realize that uh, my posts and my picture will have such, a, <laughs> such an impact. And, but sometimes I also have um, people saying to me, oh, your dentures or your work looks so good and I feel ashamed to post what I'm doing because I see your work and I think like my work is not good enough and and I would say to this text text just do it post stuff accept uh, accept constructive criticism if you go to my page you can see that uh, how I grow grow it's not something you know you have to start from somewhere and uh, don't be scared just because I do my thing and my thing looks uh, good <laughs> does not mean that your thing doesn't it's just like uh, you'll grow people grow I hope you know I, I'm not yet there where I want to be so I look up to other texts and I hope I will grow and improve my techniques and uh, so you know just don't be scared post ask questions and that's the best way to grow also your, your pictures are particularly spectacular so, so, <laughs> so one thing is to take a picture with a cell phone and it doesn't matter what cell phone it is. There are limitations to that. Uh, yeah. But it seems to me like you, you do, you actually do camera work for your dentures. So 
what are you doing? What aperture, what shutter speed, what type of lighting uh, design are you using? What's going on in that magic? So um, how my work improved, I, I tried to take pictures with my phone and stuff, and I was never really happy. I'm like, this looks so much better how I did it than what looks on the picture. And I was like, that's, I want to represent my work in a better way. So, of course, I came to my boss and I was like, uh, I need to go on a photography course. <laughs> Can you sort me out? Can you sort me out? And he was like, yeah, which photography course do you want to do? So, okay, now it's a little bit of an advertisement, but <laughs> it's like, it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, I saw that um, photography course uh, focus that they were doing an online course and I decided uh, well since we are in a corona ridden world we cannot go on a proper course this will have to do and I have to say it was the best thing I did for my career and for uh, my representation of my work so I've been on this online course for two days and after two days I decided yeah I'm gonna get myself a camera yeah, <laughs> I'm going to get myself a ring flash and I'm just going to start and uh, take pictures. And that's how I started. I mean, my pictures, uh, uh, I have a very basic setup because uh, cameras and flash and stuff, it's quite an expensive investment. But it did such a big difference to my pictures. And uh, that's what uh, what I do. I have like practically a, a box that I bought from Amazon for uh, $13. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, my camera costed a little bit more than $13. I have oh, to absolutely. say, I will have to sell a kidney soon <laughs> to, pay, to pay my bills. <laughs> Bills, but fine. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I just uh, I just practice. It's not uh, it's not a set uh, shutter speed. It's not a set lightning. I just like try different things. Uh, when I uh, take a picture, I don't take one picture. I take around sixty pictures with Absolutely. different lights, with different filters to see what I can get. And I and sometimes I nail it. Sometimes I don't still. <laughs> But it's all in the practice. I do try to practice on the weekend and stuff because, as I told you, we are not allowed to move. So I do have more time to practice and do things at home. And uh, yeah, slowly, slowly. I hope by the end of this year, I will try to, I will manage to nail this picture in 20 pictures, not in 60 pictures like <laughs> now. <laughs> so I noticed in one of your pictures, or, or a few actually, um, you you actually sent out a, a quite I think it was one of your stories and you had a, a, a one of the pictures where the denture is completely illuminated and the other one is uh, partially illuminated right and you asked which one looks better now uh, I would I would um, both of them look fantastic right they, mm -hmm. they both look great um, I'm curious to to hear what the response was the majority of the people were influenced towards the one that was fully illuminated or the one that was partially illuminated? Well, that's just to show that my aesthetic, obviously, it's a bit weird. <laughs> because for me, I like the partially illuminated. That's, uh, I prefer them. I think that's my kind of style. It, uh, I, I tend to to prefer, but everybody preferred, like majority, preferred the fully illuminated one. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, I could, I could, I think I, I sent you a message and I mes mentioned to you that I prefer the partially illuminated because it looks yeah. more cinematic. And obviously, yeah. cinematic is like for video, but it looks more dramatic. It has that dramatic yeah. effect to it, right? But as a dental technician, I could understand why people would like it fully illuminated, illuminated so they could see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is true. <laughs> but I, I mean, I like the input of other people, of course. It's uh, it's important I'm, because I'm curious, but I still like my style. Oh, <laughs> I absolutely. Still like, I still like the half illuminated. So for me, those are the ones that I prefer. And uh, I think I'm going to keep doing them. Like so <laughs> let me ask you this. For those for those technicians that, that, that uh, admire the photography work that brings out the, the, the work that you're doing, uh, 
when when you you mentioned that you're using a ring light, but with a ring light, it's difficult. I mean, it's it's impossible to get a a partially illuminated or dramatic feel because the usually that ring light is in front of the camera. So are you you moving it to the side, and what around what angle are you using? Are you using the forty five degree angle. What what angle are you using? Um, I detach the ring light. Mm -hmm. It's never like straight because mm -hmm. ring lights um, has a little bit of a thing that it gives the reflection of the surface. So mm -hmm. it can illuminate too much the denture or whatever you're photographing and you have that really light bouncing uh, off your, um, especially if it's a shiny surface. So to me, uh, I detach it from the camera and I put it around 45 degrees to the object that I am uh, photographing. And you really need to use some modifiers. So uh, not just the hush light from the ring flash. So that modifier can be like, I'll tell you my secret. <laughs> I use um, baking paper. <laughs> yes, yes, I've used it before as well. So it's just like you have, uh, you don't have to buy expensive stuff. Everything can be uh, a modifier. You just have to try different. Uh, you can use uh, A4 sheets of normal paper. You just have to experiment a little bit. Photography has to be experimental. It's fun. It's not a science. You just have to try different things and see what works for you. And uh, that's the secret. <laughs> That's the secret, experimentation. How amazing is that? How amazing is that? I, I am definitely inspired uh, by looking at your posts. I'm like, wow, man, this is this is amazing. I got I to gotta up my photography game because I do more video, right? But uh, I was thinking about that. I was like, man, I got to up my photography game, man, because this is this is amazing, right? So we, we appreciate uh, the, the, uh, the input that you that you add to the community. We're excited that uh, that you decided to accept this invitation and if you could leave a, uh, a new technician one word of advice or a word of advice what would it be just be brave be brave don't uh, push yourself don't just accept if you're stuck somewhere that you also if you're stuck somewhere that you don't see growth don't be scared to move you have to take the chance on yourself because if you don't take the chance on yourself, nobody will. So you have to keep pushing. You have to be a little bit cheeky, ask questions. Uh, today, all the information are online. Uh, people like uh, me, like Janelle, like uh, Mackenzie, like Eric, like John, like Jens, we are all online. We are all a community. You can always come to any of us especially, and we will answer your questions. It's, imp it's important to, uh, to just push yourself. That's for me, it's the most important uh, advice that I can give any young technician. I mean, I'm young, of course, the same. Of but course, but we're younger. talking about young in the <laughs> young in the industry. That's yeah, what we yeah. mean. <laughs> so, if you could give a word of advice to an advanced technician who has probably been doing this for a while, has probably been struggling uh, with with this whole situation of COVID, and probably find themselves stuck. Although their work is spectacular, they find themselves stuck. What would you say to them? Don't give up. Uh, it's it's been hard for all of us. It's uh, uh, not seeing people, not communicating, not going on courses. You know, technicians are a little bit. Um, we like our little labs and we like to be close. So courses and stuff. It's the sometimes it's the only way actually to meet other techs and like communicate. But you know, don't give up. It's uh, it, we are all in the same pot. The situation will change. And we will be back at, uh, at some kind of normality, hopefully soon. So, you know, uh, talk to other technicians, use other methods, Skype, uh, go online, be connected. Don't just close yourself into a shell. And, uh, you know, and again, we all need to talk and we all need to shoulder and uh, a happy uh, household, a, a ear that will uh, listen to us. And uh, advice goes both ways for young and uh, old technicians that uh, are in the game for some time. So, you know, that's my advice. Just don't give up. 
Beautiful words, beautiful words. Nina, it's been an honor, a pleasure having you on the Dental Today podcast. We appreciate you accepting the invitation and we look forward to that course. Thank you very much. I'm absolutely happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you.